is a one university man. He joined this department in 1980, just after finishing his MS and PhD from Caltech. Before that, he had done his BS from Calgary. Professor Fuller's research interest has been and continues to be dynamics of complex fluids and complex fluid interfaces. He brings in enormous depth to this area by worrying about microstructures of the materials as well as the interfaces and incorporating them in his analysis of rheology. Interaction between these microstructures and the flows. In the process of studying them on a real-time basis, he has made enormous contributions to the development of rheo optical techniques and also has developed a new viscometer called needle viscometer. So his sustained effort has resulted in enormous amount of excellent work. As a result, he has made very, very significant in-depth contributions to this area. In recognition of this area, he has received many awards. I'm not sure whether I uh, am aware of all of them, but at least some of them. Right in the beginning, he got the presidential president's uh, special grant for research. He then moved on to get Bingham Medal from Society of Rheology. And later on, he became the president of the same society for two years. I was very much impressed by one of the special awards called Cox Medal for Advancement of Undergraduate Research. It's something very, very interesting. He has been elected fellow of Physical Society and, of course, very prestigious fellowship of National Academy of Engineering. Uh, his topic of today has something to do with India. In India, we have we are very fond of seeing Bollywood films, and these films are known for two things: lot of bullets and lot of tears. Today, he is going to speak to us not on both, but at least on one of them. The topic of his talk is drainage and de-wetting of tear films. The same tears which Bollywood films produces. <laughs> now, now request Professor Fuller to give us the benefit of his lecture. Thank you very much, <laughs> Professor Kumar. That was, uh, that was very kind of you. And I am indeed uh, delighted to be here this afternoon and thank the uh, president of the Indian Academy, uh, Professor D. Uh, Chatterjee, and um, uh, it's uh, been my pleasure to uh, return to India on, uh, on several occasions. I was uh, uh, pleased to meet your, your past president, uh, A.J. Sood, uh, and this was part of uh, an effort that we had to uh, help develop the, the uh, science of rheology in this country, which is, which is really very well advanced. Um, and I'd, I'd like to, to also thank uh, my, my friend, uh, Professor Kumaran, for uh, the invitation to come to a very nice workshop uh, in uh, theoretical uh, mechanics that, that he's uh, organized this week. It's really uh, nice that I, I know now uh, many members of the audience uh, through, through that, uh, that interaction. It's really been very nice. Well, I'm going to tell you uh, this story. It has to do with the cheer film, 
which protects our eyes. And it's a, it's a really uh, marvelous structure that uh, we don't really think about, like many things in our bodies, until they don't work very well. And uh, uh, the, the, unfortunately, uh, the, the tear film uh, can become unstable, and uh, people uh, can suffer from something called dry eye disease. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, regrettably something that happens more frequently as we get older. Uh, uh, or if we, uh, if we wear contact lenses, I, 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 I'm not uh, in that category, but this is another, another reason why this problem can become accelerated. So the, there, there's quite a bit of interest in, in uh, the tear film and how it drains and how uh, the possibility of de-wetting uh, if that occurs. And this is the work of uh, Saad Bamla, uh, graduate student in my, in my group. Uh, he's a uh, uh, graduate of IIT Chennai, and uh, uh, I'm guessing that Saad also wishes that he could, uh, he could uh, join us uh, this, this, this afternoon. He's done some wonderful work that I'll tell you about. So there are many interfaces in our bodies, and we're, in fact, the, the human body is really uh, uh, a composite of many very complex inter interfaces that, 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 that come to play. Uh, I'm interested in, in uh, two of them in particular in my lab. These are uh, largely aqueous films, uh, uh, layers, that are protected by a surfactants that the body produces. Uh, these are insoluble layers that, uh, that cover, that spread across an aqueous solution of protein and, and other bio uh, uh, molecules. And uh, the two prominent examples uh, that you could think of would be the alveoli in our lungs. So here you have a very thin layer of, of liquid coated by lung surfactant. And uh, the, this uh, lung surfactant offers the alveoli sacs special mechanical properties that stabilize uh, that system. And, and we study this, this uh, uh, interface uh, in my laboratory. The one I'm going to tell you about uh, this afternoon has to do with the tear film. So this protects the ocular environment in, in our eyes. And um, uh, again, if, it, if, it, if it's not stable, it'll be wet, and, and that can be uh, very uncomfortable. So the tear film uh, is an aqueous layer of, uh, of protein. Uh, lysozyme is a major protein, uh, and, uh, and lactoferrin is another one. These, are, these serve as uh, bacteriocides in our eyes. They, uh, they will cleave bacteria and, and help uh, 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 keep it uh, uh, free of infection. But on top of this uh, tear film, uh, is a, a, an insoluble layer called uh, the mybum, mybomian lipids. And these are produced by glands in our eyelids. And every time we blink, we spread, we replenish uh, some of that uh, phospholipid uh, layer. But um, uh, it, it, it can break and de-wet. And this is a, a fluorescent image of a person that suffers from dry eye disease. It's also called mybomian gland dysfunction. Uh, these are the mybomian glands on the upper and lower eyelids. And uh, th this person is suffering from dry eye uh, disease, and the, the tear film has broken and de-wet, and it's extremely uncomfortable. And there are companies that uh, will offer you uh, medicated eye drops, and they may or may not work very well uh, to, to help you make it through the day if you suffer from this. And as I said, um, if you wear uh, contact lenses, this can be exacerbated. In fact, uh, the research in, in, uh, that I'm going to tell you about is, uh, is supported by Elcon. Elcon makes these medicated eye drops as well as uh, contact lenses. So they're very interested in this problem. You can, you can um, collect this mybum. It's uh, not that hard to do, although I've never had it actually collected from me. 
this is a uh, previous graduate student in this project, Danielle, and she's collecting it from her favorite uh, subject, her father. So, uh, you know, Dad volunteered to to uh, to to supply some of our earlier material. Okay, so you can swab it. Uh, but people just don't like to have things in their eyes, and so it's kind of an uncomfortable sensation. But you can, you can uh, uh, collect it, and then it spreads spontaneously on uh, water that's at the physiological temperature. Um, uh, the eyes are somewhat colder, around 30, 34 degrees centigrade, than, than, than uh, physiological temperature. But the, it spreads spontaneously. And then you can study it. And, and, um, uh, one thing you might want to do is spread it on, uh, on, at the surface of air and water uh, in an in a, in a, in a, uh, instrument called the, Lang, the Langmuir Trough. Langmuir Trough is a Teflon basin with uh, two uh, barriers that come together to compress whatever insoluble layer is sitting on top of the water. And then simultaneously, you measure the uh, surface tension uh, with a Wilhelmy balance. And uh, you, you take that surface tension and you subtract it from the surface tension of clean water, 72 dynes per centimeter. You subtract off the, the lower surface tension with the film present. That positive difference is what is called the surface pressure. So you're measuring uh, a, a Langmuir isotherm at a, at a certain temperature would measure the, the relationship between that surface pressure and, and area. And that establishes the thermodynamic conditions of, of whatever film you're, you're studying. So you, you, this, you could spread Mibamon here, and, and uh, this, is a, a, uh, this uh, device uh, uh, properly uh, 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 um, uh, uh, invented, oh, you know, in, in the late 1800s, um, and uh, has been used by uh, by uh, Langmuir as part of uh, the work he did in, in uh, getting the Nobel Prize in, in chemistry uh, in, in the in the early uh, 1900s. So here um, here is uh, the surface area surface pressure isotherm at room temperature for my bone, right here. I put on it uh, a, a, the surface pressure area isotherm of a phospholipid called DPPC, which is the principal phospholipid in our lung surfactant. So this is a, a, uh, a well-studied uh, uh, phospholipid. It goes through a very distinct phase transition here. You can see this uh, plateau which uh, it, uh, bridges what's called the liquid expanded phase and the liquid condensed phase. Mybum doesn't have a, a discernible, a discernible uh, uh, phase transition because it's a, it's a melange of, of many different, uh, 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 different uh, uh, chemicals that, that go into this mixture. But here you can see a, a fluorescent image of DPPC in the two phases. The black is, a, uh, is the liquid condensed, and the light is the liquid expanded. And this is uh, imaged by incorporating some uh, fluorescently tagged DPPC which, uh, I into the system. And that, those tag molecules are, are the last to enter the, uh, the, the liquid, liquid condensed phase. And so that's uh, how you can image those. Uh, that that uh, that uh, uh, two-phase structure. So uh, th this is the how you'd measure the thermodynamics of the system, but we're interested in the mechanical properties as well. Now to get at that, uh, I'm a rheologist, and so I'm interested in the relationship between stress and strain, dynamically. Um, and this is accomplished again using a Langmuir trough. You can see it here, so we can bring our sample to the right, the right thermodynamic state of interest. And then we, we turn this into a rheometer uh, by placing in the center a channel, just a glass channel, and we float a magnetic rod at the surface, and it's pinned by surface tension. 
And that magnetic rod is forced to glide at the interface with these Helmholtz coils that we control. And we would uh, control the, the current in those, uh, th those coils uh, sinusoidally in time would be a very popular way to, to do this experiment, a very uh, common way for us to do it. That would apply a, a uh, sinusoidal stress, surface stress, uh, to, the, to the monolayer. Uh, so we, we know that, and then we have an imaging system that measures the position of the needle or from which we can get the strength. So then we have the, uh, the stress and strain uh, that we measure, and out of that come, uh, come two moduli. Uh, if the material is very elastic, then the response will be in phase with the applied uh, stress, and, um, and you, get, you recover what's called the interfacial uh, elastic modulus. Otherwise, if it, it has a, a viscous component, you, you, could, you would measure the interfacial viscous modulus at some frequency. And these are viscoelastic inter, interfaces. And, and, and they transition from purely elastic to purely viscous responses depending on the, the applied frequency. So this is the, the strategy that you would use uh, rheologically to characterize uh, this material. And what you find from MIBUM and that's the, the data in, in red here, is that it's tremendously viscoelastic, very viscoelastic. I'm plotting here both moduli. The, the solid uh, symbols are the elastic surface modulus, and the open symbols are the viscous uh, surface modulus. Down here is DPPC. So DPPC is also viscoelastic, but much, much less so. We can control the, the viscoelasticity then by simply increasing the surface pressure, and you do that by compressing the film. And you can see orders of magnitude increase in uh, the viscoelastic properties of, uh, of human MIBO. So this is probably Dan Danielle Father's uh, material. He's a healthy guy, so this is an example of a, a healthy mybomian lipid layer. DPPC you can, uh, you can purchase uh, commercially. Now, if we, what we wanted to understand was why this material is so viscoelastic. We've, we've studied the, the interfacial uh, rheology of many materials, and MIBUM is among the most viscoelastic materials that we've measured. Why is that? And it has to do with the structure of this material. There are many ways to get at that. One popular way is using something called the Brewster Angle Microscope, where you send polarized light at an interface and re at the Brewster angle theta. And at that angle, uh, clean water uh, will not uh, produce any reflective light. That's the Brewster condition. If you apply a film on, onto the system, you will get some reflected light. You can image that onto a camera, and that image will give you some idea of the morphology of that film. So at low surface pressures, uh, you, can, you, you can see uh, uh, crystalline domains. This is a polarized light experiment, and so uh, material that is uh, oriented and crystalline, you'll, you'll, you'll see. And um, as you compress the layer, those, those, uh, those crystalline domains grow in size. So that gives us some idea of why this material is so, is so viscoelastic. And think of it as a, a soft crystalline solid material that we spread every time we blink. To get more at the details, though, uh, we've used uh, grazing incidence x-ray diffraction. So if it's a crystalline material, then uh, we can use x-rays and diffract, diffract those x-rays off of the crystalline lattice. And that's done at very low angles of incidence. So if this, if this uh, film is crystalline, you'll get a, a diffracted beams, and from that, you can learn something about the crystalline uh, lattice of, of that uh, material, um, whether or not the, the molecules on the surface are tilted, and in which direction relative to the crystalline lattice are they tilted, and so forth. So what you find with, uh, with MIBUM is that it's, and I found this remarkable, that this mixture of materials, it's not just one molecule like DPPC, it's waxy esters and cholesterol esters 
uh, and, and phospholipids as well. It's a real, it's, it's really a mixture of things, but nonetheless, they self-assemble into a very regular um, uh, uh, la uh, crystalline uh, lattice uh, on the surface. So here is the scattering vector in the plane of the film. This is a scattering vector perpendicular. And you, 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 you see a very, a very distinct uh, diffraction peaks. The location of these peaks um, relative to the, uh, to the wave vector uh, uh, frame uh, can be used to recognize the, 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 the crystalline labs that you're dealing with. And for that, we rely on a wealth of knowledge that has been acquired uh, over many, many decades of, of, of looking at different, different uh, 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 phospholipid materials, for example. So what we, what we discovered going to the literature is that there's a, an OV phase of a fatty acid that looks, bears a lot of resemblance uh, to what we're seeing uh, in, our, in our MIBA material. And we've successfully then used this, uh, this uh, the, the knowledge of, of this particular uh, 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 structure to model uh, the information that we're getting out of our, our diffraction peaks. At, at this low pressure and at higher pressures. And what, we, what we've determined is that we have two coexisting phases, um, a, a strong phase and a, a weak phase that uh, are present in, in this, 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 uh, this MIBA material. We've determined that, the, that both phases have a, are in a rectangular lattice with uh, uh, similar uh, uh, lattice ge uh, geometric uh, link scales, and uh, the, and have measured the been able to extract the tilt angle of the uh, the average tilt angle of the molecules uh, uh, residing uh, in these layers. And again, this is uh, this is striking to me because the, these these mybomian lipids that we produce are mixtures of fatty acids, uh, waxy esters, cholesterol e esters that come together. But nonetheless, uh, are, are uh, self-assemble to produce this soft, waxy material. You can also, uh, in, in addition to looking at the diffracted beam, you can look at uh, specular reflectance. And that gives you some idea of the thickness of the layer and whether or not you have multi-layers. And indeed, what we see uh, in this, uh, in the, by, by increasing, by looking at the intensity of the reflected beam as a function of of surface uh, uh, scattering, uh, surface uh, a wave vector at different uh, different surface pressures, increasing them here, you get very distinct Bragg peaks uh, that result from this this experiment that recognize that what we're spreading on our our, our, our eyes, we, we we know roughly what the surface pressure is, and and it's in the vicinity of 20 millinewtons meter and if we duplicate that in this experiment we're, we're, we're getting a distinct evidence of a uh, of a uh, a, uh, a, a multi lamella uh, structure that uh, is, is present at the air water interface and so what we what we where we're spreading is well organized it's not a monolayer but rather a multi-layer material that comes together to protect our eyes so in summary then, we have two coexisting phases. Um, at, at, low, at low pressures, we have islands of, of, uh, of crystalline domains uh, that are, are uh, swimming, uh, floating in the, in the uh, amidst uh, uh, bare spots. You compress the layer, you, you, uh, you, you produce a, a, um, a continuous film that uh, ultimately becomes a, a multi-layered material. Now, we've gone uh, further in this uh, study of structure by, by acquiring material uh, from healthy subjects as well as people suffering from meibomian gland dysfunction. Instead of, um, instead of uh, re diffracting the light at the interface, we've, sent, we've, we've done an easier experiment, and that is taken bulk mybum and, and transmitted light through it to, uh, to uh, understand uh, the, the difference between 
uh, healthy material and material from uh, people affected with this, uh, with this disease. And here's what we find. Um, these are uh, the diffracted uh, light intensity, uh, room temperature through to 34 degrees centigrade, which would be roughly the temperature of your eyes, and then on to physiological temperature, 37. You can see uh, very strong uh, diffraction peaks that, that, that ultimately melt, but are still present at physiological temperature. So this is from a, a healthy subject. And if you simply look at this material under cross polars, you, you'll, you'll see evidence of this, of this, of this, of this crystallinity, this, this order that you see even in the bulk. If you look at uh, people with meibomian gland dysfunction, you see that they lack this structure, um, much less organized, and, um, and, 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 and our measurements of the rheology of that material, uh, we, we find that it's uh, uh, much less uh, viscoelastic as well. So we're, what, we, what we're learning then is that uh, it, it, when, when in a healthy case, we're spreading this highly viscoelastic, highly structured material that protects our, our tear film. And, and, and what physical measurements can we do to get some understanding of that, of how it protects it? Um, is uh, what, what I'll spend the, the rest of our, our, uh, this presentation covering. So this is a summary of what I've just told you about the structure of this material. Now let's look at uh, questions of stability. So this is, these, this is a, uh, the, the first experiment that we constructed to examine uh, stability. Um, and this was uh, to look at uh, a, a de-wetting event. What we did, uh, uh, and we've improved this uh, with, uh, with Saad Bamla, our first experiments had a planar interface. And um, we would bring, we'd first have this interface submerged underneath a, 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 uh, an insoluble layer. It could be DPPC, or it could be MIBUM, or some other material. And we can bring it to the surface pressure of interest. We then bring this, uh, we elevate the surface through the interface, and that captures a sessile drop uh, on top of our, our substrate. And the substrates uh, we initially used uh, were, were simply uh, silicon wafers. Um, our, our work now uh, has us bring, bring up through the interface, and I'll show you that uh, experiment in a bit, a, a contact lens, because we're, we're interested in how contact lenses uh, resist uh, de-wetting. We then uh, drain the, 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 uh, the, the, the liquid in this sessile drop and, and decrease its thickness until you get spontaneous de-wetting. And we can do this, we can repeat this experiment for different surface coverages, different surface pressures of uh, an insoluble layer, and therefore different surface rheologies and see, see how that affects the, the de-wetting process. So it's a very simple experiment. You can see uh, the silicon wafer. There's a drain here. It allows us to decrease the thickness of the, of the sessile drop. Here's pure water. This is a fatty uh, alcohol, which is, has no, uh, no surface elasticity, but does have a surface uh, viscosity. DPPC is slightly viscoelastic, and then MIBUM is very viscoelastic. And this is all, all these three, uh, uh, systems with, with uh, insoluble layers on top are all at 15 millinewtons per, per meter. So they all have the same surface tension or surface pressure, but, but, but uh, they have different surface rheologies. So let's we then watch, play some movies, and you'll see water spontaneously de-wets. So it's, it de-wets immediately. Uh, so does arachidyl alcohol. Arachidyl alcohol has no surface elasticity, but it does have a surface viscosity. DPPC slightly viscoelastic. You'll see a, a uh, retardation of the of the onset of de-wetting, but once it once it occurs, uh, it it, uh, it proceeds uh, uh, rapidly. So there is a a, 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 a it displaces the, the onset of de-wetting, uh, but but uh, doesn't slow it down much. My bump, I'll play the movie here, is a it, it, there's a, there's a very strong strong um, 
postponement of de-wetting as well as a, um, as a uh, uh, slowing down, a retardation uh, of the de-wetting process. And that's not surprising. We put a, an elastic, a viscoelastic membrane on top of the water. And to de-wet, you have to stretch that interface and that, that uh, mybum is resisting that, uh, that stretching. So that you can start to appreciate why mybum is, is, is so successful in pr protecting our eyes against de-wetting. The conventional wisdom is that mybum is there to suppress evaporation. And, and it, it certainly would do some of that, but we think that the, its principal uh, benefit is through its interfacial uh, viscoelasticity. Uh, here is that a, a, a higher surface pressure. Previously it was at 15, now we've raised it to 25 millinewtons per meter. Here we're simply plotting the ratio of the wet area to the total area of the sessile drop. That, start, that ratio starts at unity. Uh, this is uh, arachidyl alcohol, which is, has no uh, elasticity, but has some, some viscous uh, uh, nature to it. DPPC uh, being slightly viscoelastic is more successful. But at this higher surface pressure, mybum is able to postpone de-wetting uh, for very long periods of time. Uh, there, there is evaporation occurring at, uh, over this time scale, but, uh, but, but no de-wetting is occurring. We used a, an, inter an interferometer to measure the shape of the sessile drops. Um, here at a low pressure, you can see the, the shape of the drop just prior to de-wetting for arachidyl alcohol. Uh, this, this is uh, about 17 microns before it de-wets. DPPC, you can get down to about 13 microns. But with mybum, because it's so viscoelastic, it can buckle. So the, the, the sessile drop will actually buckle before de-wetting occurs. So this is, has a bending modulus associated with it. At a higher surface pressure, you can see the, the, uh, the reproduction of the, the surface of that uh, uh, mybum drop uh, as you withdraw the, the, uh, its contents of the sessile drop, the, the, the substantial viscoelasticity of mybum and the bending modulus that's associated with it allows you to uh, really get a wrinkled surface uh, that uh, resists the wetting. So now uh, the, the remainder of the talk will talk about drainage and de-wetting uh, from, from contact lens surfaces. So these are hydrogels that uh, you place on your eyes uh, that are designed to uh, allow uh, permeation of, of oxygen and, and uh, allow you to, to wear these lenses comfortably. However, um, they are subject to de-wetting. And uh, so here you have the mybum layer protecting the tear film, which is a, a solution of uh, lysozyme protein as well as mucin and, and other ingredients. Um, and uh, that uh, is subject to drainage as well as possible de-wetting. So we're going to look at now a curved interface. So we have here our, our contact lens. We have then a, a film of uh, an aqueous film. And on top of that aqueous film, we have an insoluble layer. So we, we want to analyze uh, this problem. We have uh, drainage occurring uh, through, through, through gravitational uh, hydrostatic pressure. You can then calculate uh, through, through lubrication analysis uh, the, uh, the, the uh, fluid mechanics of that problem. And there are, we have the following dimensionless groups. The aspect ratio of this thin film is, is uh, very small. That is the thickness of the film, H0, compared to the radius of curvature of our eye or the contact lens. This is a very small number, so this allows us to use lubrication theory to uh, analyze the fluid mechanics in that film. Uh, the bond number, that's the ratio of gravitational forces to capillary forces. This is very large in, in, in these problems, so this is primarily a gravity-driven flow. And then we have a, a new uh, dimensionless group that's associated with these uh, problems that uh, are influenced by viscoelastic insoluble layers and that's the Boussin-S number. 
And in, in this case, it's simply the ratio of surface stress uh, in, in the layer to bulk stress uh, in, in the bulk fluid. So uh, in, in the, the case where you have a surface viscosity uh, associated with your insoluble layer, you would have the surface viscosity divided by the bulk viscosity, which is essentially water, and then two link scales, the, the thickness of the film and, and then the radius squared of, of, of the contact length. So this is the Boussin-S number, and this can be anything. This can be zero in the absence of a film all the way to uh, a very large number for something like MIBO. So you can, you can uh, solve for the momentum equations and for lubrication analysis, a very simple, simple theory, uh, to a simple set of equations to solve. You get, and, and then this is subject to uh, boundary conditions, um, no slip boundary condition at the, at the surface of the, uh, the contact lens. You have a kinematic condition at the, at the top surface, H, is the thickness of the of the film, and then we have some surface velocity. This surface velocity is subject to the surface boundary condition at the top surface. We have a balancing of the bulk stress in the in the aqueous uh, bulk liquid to the to the uh, bulk stress in the I mean the surface stress in our insoluble layer. And for a purely viscous uh, monolayer or, or, or uh, inter interfacial layer, this would simply be the surface viscosity times the Laplacian of this surface, surface uh, velocity. You can solve this set of equations, and what we're after is, is the evolution of the thickness of the film as a function of time. So you can carry out a simple mass balance uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the bulk liquid, uh, so that's the, the rate of change of the, the thickness of the layer against, against the volumetric flow rate. From, and for that, you, you use the results of this calculation. And you get equations like this. And in the, for, uh, for the two limiting cases, uh, that is, if, you, if they're in the absence of any uh, interfacial uh, layer, the Boussin S number would be zero. And that amounts to simply uh, uh, taking, setting the surface stress at, at the bulk of the liquid to be zero. So that's your, your normal uh, stress boundary condition for an air-water interface. The other limit would have an infinite Boussin S number, and there you, you would have an, an in, in its, in, in its extensible uh, top surface, so you would have a no-slip boundary condition. The, the velocity would, would, would tend to zero at the surface of that film. In, in, either, in either of these two limits, this equation is, is easily solved, and you get what's called the, the Reynolds thinning equation, uh, where the, the thickness of the layer is the simple square root dependence on time, where time has been made dimensionless uh, with this, uh, with, with this uh, time scale shown here. This parameter alpha depends on the Boussin S number. If the Boussin S number is zero, alpha is simply one third. If the Boussin S number tends to infinity, alpha becomes 112. And so you have this uh, very simple uh, result, and that is, depending on the Boussin S number, uh, we expect to get uh, a Reynolds thinning result uh, sandwiched between these two limits, alpha equals a third and alpha equals a 12. And that's what this uh, simple uh, analysis tells you, is that the, the dimensionless height of this uh, this, uh, this draining liquid is going to decrease with dimensionless time, and you're going to either go from this limit here, where alpha is one-third for uh, a simple air-water interface, to a, a infinite Boussin S number, where alpha becomes a 12, and uh, uh, everything in between. So this is the instrument that we built to measure this drainage phenomena. Um, we have a Langmuir trough. And here we have our, uh, a hemispherical titanium uh, 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 surface onto which we can place our contact lens. This is then initially submerged below an interfacial uh, layer. So we'd, we'd, spread, we'd have a, water film, a, a layer of water onto which we would spread 
mybum or some other, other insoluble surfactant, pressurize it to a desirable surface pressure, and then this, uh, this, this uh, hemisphere is then elevated through the interface uh, with, with, a, uh, with, with a computer driven motor. Also attached to the, the, the same motor is an interferometer which continuously measures the thickness of that, of that drainage film. Now we're also interested in de-wetting. So this, the interferometer is used to measure drainage. To measure de-wetting events, we, we use a, a, a camera for the special illumination dome that allows us to, to track the, uh, the, the onset of de-wetting and uh, the, the, uh, the evolution of the moving contact line as, as the de-wetting de proceeds uh, on top of that surface. So we, we have uh, uh, those two uh, experiments that we conduct. So here's our, our contact lens. We then pressurize our insoluble layer uh, above it, elevate the, um, the uh, contact lens through the, the surface, and that will capture a, um, a thin film of, of water along with um, the insoluble layer. The interferometer will then measure the, the, the drainage of that, uh, of that film and this camera would, would measure the onset of de-wetting. So it's a, th that's the experiment that, that, that uh, we've built to uh, analyze this, uh, th this phenomenon. So here are the results of the interfer interferometry uh, measurements. So, so we measure in real time the thickness of this uh, drainage film as a function of time. So here is this dimensionless time, uh, made dimensionless by uh, uh, this combination of the viscosity of uh, water, the, the bulk liquid, and the rest is uh, the, the, the geometry of, of, the, of, of the, the system, the, the curvature of our, of our contact lens, the initial thickness of the film that we capture, and then uh, gravity. Um, then this is the, the film thickness that we capture. The, the blue data are, are for pure water, so here the boost nest number is zero. And you can't see it, but we fit this uh, simple Reynolds uh, uh, thinning equation through the data, and we, we, we uh, capture the expected uh, fitting parameter of alpha is equal to a third in that case. The green data are for DPPC at a surface pressure of 15 millinewtons per meter. So this is, uh, then captures a, a larger uh, a thickness uh, uh, of uh, film thickness, so you capture a, a thicker film, um, and then there is a slowing down of the drainage, and alpha is now somewhere between uh, a third and an eighth. It happens to be a fifth, around a fifth, and, and uh, uh, that, that's the fitting parameter uh, to this simple expression. Mybum, on the other hand, captures a very, a very large. Uh, 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 fluid uh, uh, thickness of, uh, of film and slows it down. In fact, it slows it down even slower than the, the, one, the one twelfth that is predicted by uh, if alpha was what you would capture if for an infinite boost in S number. Uh, but this analysis, remember, was for a purely viscous interface. And we know that uh, mybum is viscoelastic and, and uh, uh, we, we have evidence that it's the viscoelasticity of mybum that is causing this to, uh, to uh, be slowed down uh, e even better than, than what, what you would expect for a, an infinitely viscous um, uh, uh, interfacial layer. So they, we, we, we get, not surprisingly, uh, good fits to this simple Reynolds thinning equation um, in all cases. What we, what we ha aren't able to predict right now, which would be uh, which would require a more sophisticated analysis, is the thickness of the layer that's being captured by this uh, by this dome as it ele is elevated through the through the interface, and how that thickness depends on the on the viscoelasticity of the insoluble layer uh, that's uh, uh, on top of that water. But you can see here clear uh, clear evidence of the 
of the success of Maibum in uh, offering stability uh, to, to, to this uh, aqueous uh, layer. But ultimately, it will uh, continue to, to, uh, to diminish in thickness until dewetting ensues uh, somewhat later on. Um, so why, uh, why, why is uh, Maibum so successful, even uh, 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 better than a, a, a infinitely viscous uh, layer that has no, no uh, elasticity? And it, it is because Maibum is, uh, is in fact viscoelastic, we believe. The, 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 um, the mechanisms that you, you might offer up uh, uh, in addition to viscoelast surface viscoelasticity well, would be um, uh, Marangoni stresses. So that would be um, another explanation as to why, why we're, we're getting this uh, uh, strong retardation uh, of, uh, of, of uh, drainage in the case of Maibum. And we think that that's not, not the answer because um, Maibum uh, has, it has a, a, a smaller, what's called Gibbs elasticity. You can see that, that the, the, uh, the steepness of this uh, curve, how fast surface pressure increases uh, with diminishing surface area that, that this, uh, the, the slope of this curve is much smaller than DPPC. DPPC uh, in, in, in the vicinity of 15 millinewtons per, per meter, which is where, where this, uh, uh, these experiments were done, uh, is a much stiffer film. So that uh, any, any um, uh, stretching of the interface and, and, and uh, 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 change in, 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 in the, the surface area, uh, uh, the, the surface concentration of DPPC, if it occurred, would produce a, a stronger uh, Marangoni uh, flow than, than in the case of Maiba. Uh, that doesn't occur, and we believe that uh, Marangoni stresses are not the answer here. Uh, uh, but rather, uh, it's, it's the viscoelasticity of, of the mybum that, that, uh, that offers this uh, additional uh, um, benefit in, in stability. What we've done to, to, to give evidence of that are, uh, are some uh, uh, particle imaging villasymmetry measurements on, on, on the surface of mybum uh, during, during uh, uh, the onset of de-wetting. So here, here what, what, what we've done is taken advantage of the fact that, um, that uh, Mybum is highly structured. You, you saw the, 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 those uh, crystalline domains that, that you can measure on this material. We can track those and, and, and look at the surface uh, uh, flow pattern on the surface of this contact lens just prior to de-wetting. And you can see that what's happened in this viscoelastic material is that there is a that there is a recoil effect uh, that, that that ensues uh, on this viscoelastic material. That is, there's a counterflow. That the, the, there's a, a um, there, there's a there's a uh, a, uh, a tendency for, for for the material to to flow upstream, and uh, and that we believe is the reason why the the um, the, uh, the drainage is, is slowed down uh, even beyond what, what a, a simple, uh, uh, purely viscous monolayer would pr pr produce in the limit of uh, infinite looseness number. You can also uh, study the influence of osmotic pressure. Remember, uh, th these are, are porous materials. Uh, these contact lenses uh, 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 can support a osmotic flux. And you can see that here, uh, where we have taken uh, different contact lenses. This is a contact lens uh, Pure Vision, manufactured by Bosch and Lom. This is Air Optics, manufactured by Seba Vision. Um, and we've done uh, experiments where we have previously soaked these lenses in uh, deionized water. So they're saturated with deionized water. And then we've uh, done two experiments. One where we've elevated the 
the lens through, again, through de deionized water. That, those are the, the use of the drainage experiments here. Or through phosphate buffered saline solution. So this is, has, uh, uh, a, a, uh, has ions in it of a certain uh, osmolality. And you can see that what happens in this case is that when you bring the contact lens through deionized water, and, and this is in the absence of any surface film here, you recover uh, the, the, uh, the, the data that we got before where, where alpha uh, is, is roughly a third in this case. When you, when you bring it up through uh, phosphate buffered saline solution, you've got an osmotic flux out of the lens which slows down the, uh, the, the, the drainage. And so um, there, there's a lot of attention paid to, to uh, the, uh, the matching the osmotic, uh, the osmolality uh, of, uh, of uh, contact lenses to, to the osmolality of, uh, of, of the tear film. And, and this is why, that, that, that uh, differences is in, in osmotic pressure can bring liquid either into or out of, of the, uh, a contact lens and uh, affect, its, uh, affect the stability of the tear film in that case. So this is a, an, a, an interesting problem that uh, we're, we're just getting into uh, in the context of, uh, of, of uh, these hydrogel contact lenses, the fact that they can support osmotic flux. The other problem, uh, which is terribly important, is de-wetting. And there you worry about the fact that uh, contact lenses can be fouled by uh, constituents in the tear film, in particular uh, protein. Uh, remember that uh, lysozyme protein is a dominant protein in the tear film, and it can adsorb onto a contact lens. And uh, if, if, uh, if you're not careful, this can produce uh, de-wetting. So here's a, an experiment you can see from the side, you'll see the, the lens come up and then the top we have our imaging system which allows us to look at uh, uh, ultimately de-wetting. The first thing that happens which you can't see is drainage. That, for that we use the interferometer to measure the thickness of the film. But after a while you start to see interference uh, fringes occurring and, and that is the, the uh, procession of de-wetting and uh, movement of the contact line across this, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, contact line. So uh, you can then uh, follow this. So here the, the contact lenses come through. You can see here the ratio of the wet area to the total area. And during, during drainage, that's one. That ratio is unity. But once de-wetting occurs, that ratio starts to diminish, and this is the de the de-wetting dynamics uh, uh, following that. Now this is an experiment where there was nothing protecting the, uh, that, that top uh, layer. It was just pure air-water interface uh, where you first see the drainage. We've already talked about that. that that's what we, where we use the interferometer. And then finally this imaging system to look at de-wetting. So in this experiment here we're looking at the, the influence of the ability of these lipids to protect uh, a lens in against uh, postponing and slowing down drainage, but postponing uh, any any uh, de-wetting events that, that occur. But uh, these pro these uh, hydrogel uh, materials can be fouled with protein. Protein can absorb into them, and that'll render it more hydrophobic. So here is uh, the de-wetting of uh, uh, of a of a clean contact lens. And you can see that if we soak the, 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 the lens in lysozyme, you get a, uh, a diminution in the on onset of de-wetting. So that uh, you know, the, the manufacturers uh, admonish us to properly uh, clean our contact lenses uh, after use, and, and this is part of the reason why. Um, lipids will also uh, uh, follow the lenses. Remember, we're, we're inserting these lenses through uh, mybum. Uh, so we've looked at uh, uh, the deposition of lipids on top of the co uh, contact lenses. And for that, we use uh, two photon microscopy uh, with uh, uh, material. This is DPPC with a, a, with a fluorescent tag. You can see 
the two-phase uh, 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 coexistence uh, uh, of, this, of this phospholipid deposit directly onto a contact lens. And it sits right on top of the lens. And will that change the, uh, the ability of this uh, lens to resist de-wetting? Um, and so you can see this, this lens uh, coated with, uh, with uh, these phospholipid uh, DPPC in this case. Um, we've also looked at uh, uh, cholesterol and mybum uh, and how it, uh, how they they uh, attach themselves to these lenses. Um, mybum, unfortunately, does uh, cause the the uh, an acceleration of de-wetting on, on, on on, when it's a, it sits on a, a contact lens. DPPC and cholesterol don't. So there are many reasons why uh, you, you have to properly uh, clean these lenses. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're wonderful uh, objects that are designed to reside in our eyes, but they can become contaminated rather, rather easily, and that changes their, their, their comfort level. So what have I uh, talked about this afternoon? I've talked about this wonderful material, this phospholipid mixture that we spread every time we blink. And it's very viscoelastic, and we think that's its primary purpose. Yes, it can diminish uh, 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 evapor evaporative loss, but we believe its primary role is through its viscoelasticity. It slows down drainage and resists uh, de-wetting. And with that, I'll uh, thank uh, the uh, Academy once again, and thank you for coming this afternoon. And what is, what's remarkable to me is you can, you, you saw that, you can image the, the, the structure of this film. You saw the person with, with well, this person here, okay, they've, they, with dry eye disease. Well, even in a healthy person, you can, you can add uh, uh, a fluorescent dye and image the swirl patterns of this mybum. It's highly structured. And you'll blink, and that structure will not be dramatically altered. It takes many, many, many blinks before you start to see this rearrange. So I, I, I'm of the opinion that when we blink, we override this viscoelastic layer. And, and don't, it's not like an accordion that we're compressing it and, and decompressing it, but we're, we're overriding it uh, when, when we blink. Yeah, any more queries? Yes, establish a contact uh, angle um, at the surface of the needle and uh, uh, so you have to pay attention to that and we have several varieties uh, this was commercialized by a company and they'll they'll offer you needles with different coatings so we we normally for these experiments use uh, uh, it's a, a Teflon coated glass rod and inside that is this magnetic material but, but it's something you have to pay attention to. I ask one more question. This is regarding the, the composition of the mybum mm -hmm. fluid that you have. Is there some understanding of what it contains? Does it have any, any even small amounts of any high molecular weight polymer? Uh, I mean, not. Uh, well, there could be, you know, protein m might attach to it, but. No, directly it's long chain, but not, not macromolecular, long chain fatty acids, uh, fatty esters, uh, cholesterol. Um, uh, so what gives it this elastic? Well, it's, because it's, it's well organized. And, and um, you can think of it as a soft, waxy material. And so uh, at the surface pressures in her eyes, these, these uh, chains are, are standing relatively upright, you know, t about 23 degrees to the vertical, and they're jam-packed. And uh, they, they move, and it's, you can think of it as a, 
as uh, deforming much like a liquid crystalline material. You can think of it as a symmetric, sort of like a symmetric liquid crystal. Uh, and that's, that's the origin. Yeah, any more queries? Yes. Go, in back. Or is it of the bilayer? Well, uh, we, we sweep right through, um, uh, through to to from from monolayer to ultimately to bilayer. So we're we, uh, uh, when you compress a monolayer, uh, you follow the isotherm. Um, a number of things can happen. Uh, and some materials will pop up into bilayers. Some materials will will uh, collapse. And, 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 and go into the subface. This material seems to bunch up. So, so if, where the deep, where your surface model is saturates, that is when you have the bilayer. We have, yeah, that's right. In our eyes, it's a multi-layered material. Okay, I had one more question. How do you do the particle velocimetry on the uh, surface of the contact lenses? Well, uh, be, because mybum had is highly structured, you can, you can, you can, it, 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 it produces its own particles, so to speak, that you can track. So what are the sizes of these crystallites? Are they? Oh, they're on the order of tens of, uh, tens of microns. Okay. So you can see them with Bruce Triangle microscopy. You know, so that's, there, there are tens of microns. Size. Thank you. Yeah, yes, please. Procedure in, in these drainage equations uh, that you uh, that you 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 you, you have a, a pseudo steady state uh, at, at, at some location and and you, you you solve that that problem at that location and then calculate a a volumetric flux and build that into an in a continuity equation that gives you the the uh, evolution of the thickness now. There are a lot of there are many other there are other simplifications. Um, uh, ultimately, as the as the film thins, you can have undulations in the film thickness, which give rise to uh, capillary uh, capillary driven flows, which we've neglected here. Um, and but we know that they're important because uh, the, uh, the the films when they de-wet always de de-wet. Never at the top, but but somewhere uh, 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 near near to the uh, 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 not somewhere on the side. And what's known about these films is that you you, you get uh, a dimple. There, there's a, a dimpling of of the uh, uh, pressure induced dimpling, and that can give rise to a capillary stress that we we, we neglect. So there's uh, certainly much more you can do. Uh, to improve the analysis. This was the simplest possible uh, analysis of drainage, uh, just to give you some, some idea. And it works rather surprisingly well uh, for, for the majority of the, of the, de, of the drainage uh, uh, dynamics. So I see that the previous slide in which you showed uh, Michael doing uh, was compared to Yeah, this is a a a, um, a lens that was contaminated with with mybum. So we we let it drain and and de-wet, and uh, we had we had mybum on the surface, and then we let it drain, and then and then it it uh, uh, it, it just uh, adheres to to the to, to the lens. Then you repeat the experiment again. So you, 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 lower, you lower the, the mybum covered lens you, and now, now you spread a, a new film and you bring that up. And what you find is that it de-wets uh, much more, it, it de-wets. 
whereas uh, that's not the case uh, for DPPC or cholesterol. They, they don't. So the, the MIBOM is rendering the surface of this uh, this lens more uh, hydrophobic. Uh, yes, please. Can you transfer your monolayers or multilayers by LB technique to other yeah. uh, sub, sub, substrates to do AF and Yeah, it, it, um, possibly. Um, we've been relying on uh, this two photon microscopy, you know, that's where we are able to get these images. This one here, you can. Uh, DPPC is nice because you get very well um, defined uh, domain structures. Uh, and you can see this was taken from this location on, on the lens, and this is actually a movie here. It'll, yeah, so this will, so this is the, the, the de wetting of the lens in the presence of uh, a DPPC uh, monolayer coverage, you see the wetting occurs. And then we've 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 taken a piece of that lens and put it in this two-photon microscope, and you can image. And, and so it tra it transfers right onto the surface of the lens, but you can see the the fluid mechanics is distorted. You, you can see how, how how you get a distortion of that of that uh, domain morphology. But this does not uh, adversely affect uh, de-wetting, whereas MIBUM does. OK, any more queries? One last one. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I, I think this uh, our our goal, working with uh, Alcon, was to help them in the formulation of um, of their um, their medicated drops. And what 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 uh, what uh, we've um, I, I hope have convinced them that, that 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 they need to pay attention to the viscoelasticity. Clearly, I mean that's my main message here, of uh, 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 of this uh, material, um, and so they're 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 uh, paying attention to that. Uh, um, it um, with respect to the problem of, of contact lenses, it's it's uh, it can help in the design of cleaning solutions that you might use to uh, properly. Uh, um, uh, re recover the ability of uh, of a lens to resist the wetting, uh, so it could, you could guide a person into how to treat their their, their lenses and care for them. This myobium is a single layer between the eyelid and the eye, or are there for two more layers? There, the, the myobium sits on top of the tear film. So. So there are three layers there. There's, there's, there's the aqueous layer, yeah. the, and then the myobium. So if myobium is continuous, how does the aqueous layer get replenished? Well, you have, you, you have the tear ducts as well. From underneath. You, you, they go from yeah, underneath. Yeah, I think, I think our friends from the ophthalmology department will be able to answer that better than me. Yeah, three layers. Yeah, three layers. Yeah, three layers. Yeah, now uh, outer layer is viscoelastic, it yeah. is continuous. Yeah. So how does water go in, saline go in, between that layer and the eye? And in the in the tear ducts that you have. So this is that is something you're saying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there must be some way. Yeah. Uh, before we proceed further, our academy would like to honor him with the bouquet. Okay. You have to check. You please give. Wow, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. These are two books on the academy. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Don't go away so soon. It's always a pleasure to, to listen to talks like this. 
particularly when you realize how complex nature is and how simple it looks. We spend so much time in trying to understand, but possibly nature doesn't even know how it has happened. Uh, maybe may I request you to join us uh, in showing our appreciation to Professor in no uncertain way. Thank you, sir. So we can have tea now. Thank you.